Gotta love it. And we're on. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got the net this one, y'all. What's going on, y'all? Captain Carr here. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Brandon. I fish here along the Alabama Gulf Coast, as well as run a few charters. Today, I'm on the blackjack. It's after lunch right now. I actually just got through running a sheep's head trip. Got the carcasses right here. If y'all didn't know, at least in Alabama, you have to be 500 feet from land to legally dump fish carcasses. So that's what I'm doing here. I do want to thank Joseph and Jalen for a great trip. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I know I had a good time as well, but we're going to get these fish dumped and it is pretty out here. It is uh, mid-November right now. Water temperatures are sitting about 60 degrees. So we're going to go back out. I've got some feather crabs. I've got some what was live shrimp, now fresh dead shrimp. Uh, I might have a few live ones left and we're going to Probably go out to one of these rigs, maybe the bridge, see what we can get on. Maybe some redfish, sheep's head. I don't know, but we're going to have a good time. And if y'all are watching this, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Let's get to catch it. All right, let's let her eat. Woo, that's some big old waves right there. Surfing. You see it crashing over there. All right, sorry I didn't have the camera on. We just pulled up to the spot. I dropped a shrimp just to see if there's any fish here. And we've got a quality sheep's head. Quality fish. Let's see if we can eat them. Boom! There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Good fish. I am gonna throw a few in the cooler to keep. So we just pulled up to this bridge right here and uh, I noticed the current was ripping pretty good so I wasn't sure if uh, we were going to be able to fish this or not. So I just dropped one shrimp down and we just caught probably about a 16, 17 inch uh, fish right there. And I am starting to fish on the down current side of these bridge pylons. One, because it's easier to hold your bait there. And two, most of the time that's where the fish like to hang out because they don't have to fight the current. So we're gonna put this fish in a box. We're gonna probably put another shrimp or another crab down and get tight on some more. As always, I always like to stick a, a knife in there, bleed these fish out, not necessary, but Definitely, you can tell whenever you're cleaning these fish how much cleaner it is. All right, let's grab us a Krabby Patty out here. Nice, big, juicy mud crab here. Put it on our knocker setup. Just like so. And I did have to add an extra weight on here just because this current is ripping pretty good. Throwing this on my pin, Spin Fisher. This is a 3500. I'm sorry, a 4,500 with a 20 pound braid. See if uh, we can recreate what we just did. Filming. Dropping it down to the bottom, letting it sit. May have to get a little bit closer to the bridge legs. Nope, we're already getting a bite. Let him chew on it. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, good bite. <clears throat> there we go. That's a smaller one. It's all right though. I was just about to say, I usually like fishing around the bridge because most of the time the, uh, the size of the fish are better quality, but it's not very often that it's common enough this time of the year that you can actually get out here and fish. I have caught some monsters out here. Just gotta hit it when the time's right and the temperature's right, or the uh, water temperature's right. Most of the time, they get stacked out here I mean, at all of these legs. There's no one particular spot. Uh, as long as you find the right depth that they're at, <clears throat> they're usually there in numbers. I'm waiting until I feel weight on my rod tip before I set the hook, and there we go. That feels like a decent one. Oh yeah, that's a good eating size fish. Oh yeah, I love to see it. We're on the goats. The goats, let's give a yeet, yeet. Boom. That's what we want right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is a healthy quality sheep 
Let's get a quick measurement here. Hopefully she don't flop out of my hands. Sitting at uh, 16 to the fork. 16 to the fork. We're gonna get her in the ice. All right. Just for giggles, we're gonna grab a dead shrimp out of here. Got us a dead shrimp. Now, these size shrimp right here, about two inches long, are perfect sheep's head shrimp. Because normally, one or two chomps on that shrimp, and they've already got that bait in their mouth. Unlike if you're throwing a big one, they have to really chew on it for a while to finally get to the hook. And we're already getting bit. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. And we're on. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good fish. <sighs> Loosen that drag just a little bit. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got the net this one, y'all. If it stays on. Uh, come on. Oh, good. Googly goo, that's a good fish. Where are you going? I knew when I set the hook on this one, it was a good fish. Come on. Boom. Oh yes. Golly. On the shrimp. Shrimp getting it done. There we go. Got some gold sparkles. Look at that mouth. Love it. So when you're fishing around a lot of structure, like pylons and stuff with barnacles or concrete, you always wanna uh, check your leader here. Make sure you don't have any frays because you're gonna get your feelings hurt if you don't check it and you have a fray in your line and then you hook a big one and it breaks off. And also your hooks, make sure your hooks stay sharp and you don't get uh, any dull points on those. Trust me, I've lost some good fish from not paying attention to that detail there. And sometimes I'm just lazy and don't want to retie. And then you end up breaking off on a big fish <clears throat> and you know you should have went ahead and retied. All right, we're gonna give that pile on a break. Move to this next one here. Same depth, same structure. I don't see why they wouldn't be on this one either. But you never know, they're fish. There he goes. <clears throat> Gotcha. That's a little bit smaller one. I was gonna throw him back anyways. <laughs> we got some kayakers out here. I don't know where they came from, but I know they had a good paddle wherever they did. Trying to help them out. They were struggling catching some sheep's head. I told them to come hit the back side of these pylons. He's giving it a shot now. We're gonna see if he gets on any. Just got a little piece of dead shrimp on now. Yep, there he goes. Come on. Got him. Got him. Hit spot lock real quick. That feels like a decent fish. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> that bug's flying in my ears. Let's see how he's hooked, or she. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think she's coming off. Looks like it's hooked pretty good. Yeet! Boom! Sheep on the deck. There's your bridge monster right there. Has about a 19 inch sheep's head. Fat too, they're thick, pretty cold. I love these fish so much. <laughs> I think this is gonna be the last one we're gonna keep. We might fish a little bit longer, catch one or two, but we're gonna call it a day, get to the house, cook one of these up.
it hasn't been taking long. These fish are f literally falling this bait down. And if I'm not getting a bite within 10 seconds, then I'm just gonna go ahead and reel it up and recast because this current is just ripping my bait out. Now, honestly, I could probably put on a heavier weight, but I just don't feel like it. And this is working for the time being. There we go. That feels like a good bite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Come on. That's right. Perfect. Perfect eating size. All right. Well, I think this makes fish number four in the box. And he is kind of messed up. Look at that, got a little indention right there in his dorsal fin. I don't really know uh, what's up with that. Maybe something tried to get him when he was younger or maybe it's just a defect, deformed fish, but he's gonna eat the same. We had us a nice little afternoon sheep's herding trip. Been out here maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Got a few fish in the box, can't complain. Uh, We're gonna go ahead and throw this fish in the box. We'll see y'all at the house. All right, well, we are back at the house now. It's the next afternoon. I went ahead and just took the five fish that I harvested yesterday, stuck them in my cooler with some ice. Uh, I didn't quite have enough time yesterday to be able to clean these fish and film them and do the cooking part and all that, but uh, we do now. So that's what we're gonna do. As always, we're gonna be using our seven inch sword fillet knife. Tell y'all what, if y'all are looking for a great knife, to uh, get one of your uh, significant others for Christmas or any of the other holidays or just in general. If they love uh, cleaning fish, catching fish, and cleaning wildlife or whatever, these knives right here will definitely be a good choice for that. I love the handle on these. Feels great in your hand. And uh, they do have this anti-corrosive material on the outside of this carbon steel blade. And of course, they hold an edge. So that's enough talking. We're gonna go ahead and get this sheep head cleaned up here. now. I normally, when I'm cleaning sheep's head, use a serrated blade, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be using a straight blade just because not everybody enjoys or has the luxury of having a serrated blade. So a lot of people are intimidated by a sheep's head because of their tough scales. But one thing you gotta keep in mind is if you cut from the inside out, it is not that hard at all. And also another major factor is you want to have a sharp blade if you don't have a sharp blade any fish is going to be tough to uh to clean and as you'll see here we're basically just cutting from the inside out as i said and we're going around this large rib cage right here all this is is not what you want to cut through because that will dull a blade very quick that is stomach section and y'all i mean what 15, 20 seconds, and we've got that beautiful fillet off right there. No meat wasted. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this fish around. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you don't have any scales on your blade. Gonna kinda come in at an angle. Make your initial cut right there. Come back around the head. And just work down that spine there. And these fish also have a little zipper right here. You may be able to see on the camera but if you can't get your knife started there sometimes you can lift up this little flap here and you can get your knife started right there gonna start lifting that fillet up as we run our knife down that backbone there nothing to it at all same thing here we're gonna start peeling around this rib cage because we don't want to dull our knife and cut on that rib cage there we don't want any of that meat anyways. Just cut around it. And boom, we're done. Nothing to it, y'all. Y'all don't be intimidated by these fish right here. They're not hard to clean. You just need to know how to clean it the right way. So we've got our fish here. Go ahead and take the skin off. And I do like to leave a little bit of meat on the skin because these fish do have uh, some red. As you'll see here, I left just maybe, you know, like 
two millimeters, you know, an eighth of an inch of uh, meat on the skin there. And that allows us to not have near as much red meat to cut off. Basically all we have is this small little bloodline, which I like to cut on both sides. Try and get it as close as possible. That way you're not wasting any meat. We're gonna chunk that. Well, that is gonna be enough for myself for this dish and maybe my wife if she decides to eat some. I'm gonna go ahead and get these other four fish cleaned up and we'll see y'all in the house. All right, so we're back in the house. We've got the uh, the skillet heating up on the uh, stove top there. We've got our fish seasoned. And so I get asked a ton, I mean, I'm talking about a lot, of what is my favorite way to eat sheep's head or pretty much fish in general. I gotta say, fish tacos, you, you can't go wrong with fish tacos. They're easy, simple, hard to mess up, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. And y'all know that's why I like simple. Uh, so we've got some sheep's head fillets right here already seasoned up. We've got some butter in the skillet. And uh, we got some lemons right here. I'm going to let my wife explain what the deal is with this know. jar of water right here and some lemons. Why? Why? I don't know. I've seen it and it works. You put what works? The water. You put the lemons in the water and you put it in the fridge and they stay good. So they last longer when you sit them in water. How? How old are these lemons right here? Like a month. A month old. So if these are just sitting in a jar on the stove, I mean on the counter, like, they'd be hard. They'd be hard and nasty. Huh. Learn something new every day. We're gonna throw these fish on the skillet right here. Like I said, it don't take very long. Uh, I just put some Everglades fish and chicken seasoning on there. We're gonna put a little bit of garlic salt and uh, squeeze some lemon on the pan while we're cooking. And that's about it. Pan's looking good here. Just a little light seasoning. You don't need a whole lot. I like to put some uh, some Baja sauce on my tacos, so you don't need a whole lot of seasoning at all. These fillets are beautiful. Highly recommend bleeding this these fish, as y'all seen in the video. There is very little to no red in those fillets, and I didn't even have to cut much off. Go ahead and season the other side while we've got them in the pan. Turn this heat up a little bit. I just got it on medium to low heat. Wait till we start hearing some sizzling action going on. We'll flip them over and then squeeze some uh, lemon juice in there. It'll be about good to go. All right, so we've already flipped our fish. We've got our lemon right here. We're gonna squeeze some juice on this fish. Oh, uh, it just exploded. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> just went everywhere. All right, we got our sheep fillets right here. I don't think you've ever had sheep's head before, have you? Well, we gotta do a taste test before we throw it on the taco, see if you like it. Here's a piece for you. And I already know it's good. Oh, I'll take the whole piece, there you go. Just by itself. She asked me, does it have a fishy taste? Absolutely not. It's not my favorite. It's not bad. Why? Not well, what? Why is it not your favorite? What are, What about it? I don't know. I just... Is it, I may have put too much lemon. It might be the citrus. Is it that, the lemon? Either that or one of the seasonings. I don't know, she's crazy. <laughs> Try that piece. That actually tastes different. Better, same? It's better. She didn't like fish a while back. Now she's starting to eat fish, if y'all are new to the channel. So, I'm happy that she's eat, eating it in general. All right, so we got our taco built here. Very simple, lettuce, tomato, fish. Uh, I'm gonna skip pass on the cheese this time. Got our Baja sauce. Ooh, that came out quick. Just put a little bit. All right, let's get us a bite here. 
Maybe you'll like it better on a taco. Everything's better on a taco. Better? Yeah? You like it? It's better. A lot of y'all have commented on previous videos with her in it saying uh, that she's just doing this just for me, that she don't really like the fish, but you wouldn't be eating it if you didn't like the fish, right? All right. She's just naturally camera shy, trying to warm her up to the camera. She doesn't talk a whole lot. Very shy. She'll come around. But really, highly recommend fish tacos. Like I said, very simple, easy, and good. So we're gonna go and wrap this video up. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. And if y'all wanna see any other videos similar to this one, I'll put some up right here on the screen. We'll see y'all there.